Good day, my plan foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be going big box store plan shopping at Lowe's, Preston Road in Frisco, Texas. Thank you for tuning in. We're gonna see if we actually got some type of restock at this Lowe's. These, um, this Lowe's actually has gotten me a lot of really nice plant finds, so you won't believe what kind of plants we will find today. If you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram at Grow Folds. I'd love to engage with you. And as you can see, we're gonna walk over here and. And the first thing we're going to walk over to is an aglonema red siam or an aglonema siam aurora this is another one of those plants that i always feature in all of my plant videos to all of my plant foldies or what i call my subscribers and viewers you know that i love me some aglonemas these are all by costa farms and these are for $15.98. I like how Costa Farms has actually updated some of their planters. I do like the ceramic matte planter. And you can see this is an Alocasia Silver Dragon. Um, this one's for $19.98. Although this Lowe's actually has things on sale. The Costa Farms Training Tropicals for $14.98. So really excited about that. I know for all of the plant foldies that um, tune in daily, I really appreciate you guys on the live premieres. And then for all of my regulars that are always on the chat, thank you so much um, as always if you get a chance please hit or actually smash the like button for this video it helps me out and you can see right over here we have a gorgeous Diffenbachia sparkle this one I've actually been eyeing for a while and then also right over here we have an aglonema um, golden bay so these plants are actually for also $14.98 um, they're on sale at this low so if you want a nice large plant like this the, this is the lows you want to go to they actually still have them on sale i kind of regret actually not getting that Diffenbachia just because the, um, the health of it and the selection isn't quite there but we're going to go ahead and walk over here and check out what other plants they have um, this lowe's actually tends to have some really good plant restocks although i would say it seems like they've um, sold through a lot of their plants um, they had a bunch of pallets of hanging baskets and just all sorts of plants. But as you can see right here, we have a Calathea Dottie. Love this Calathea Dottie. What makes this Calathea great is the new um, foliage. Um, new growth actually comes out green and then it darkens into a beautiful purple. I love dark foliage plants. And, you know, that's one thing that I'm getting into is collecting plants that are either black or a very dark color. I think those are beautiful plants. And you can see that um, although I feel like they haven't been restocked, um, they are actually re-merchandising these plants. So whenever you go big box store plant shopping, you can actually see if they have some good care um, routines around this, like this Xanthosoma right over here, which reminds me of either a Caladium or an Alocasia. These plants are beautiful, and I believe they might have moved these plants onto this table. Um, normally, it's on that pallet at the very beginning of a Lowe's um, entrance. And then right over here, we have another beautiful Diffenbachia. I'm not 100% sure what this one is, but this one is for $12.98 in a six-inch six planter. Um, you know, with Diffenbachia, I'll tell you the care tips, as I always tell um, anybody, is they do require bright indirect light. If they don't get a lot of bright light, they get leggy. Now, this plant right over here is a Dracaena Hurricane. This one hasn't um, doesn't really have all the twisting, but this is an easy care plant in a self-watering planter for $15.98. Um, by Costa Farms. Um, yeah, $15.98 in a self-watering planter. I love self-watering planters just because it takes the guessing game of whether we need to plant, you know, water a plant or not. And then right over here, we have an Aglonema Mystic Silver. Beautiful Aglonema. And what I find interesting is if you look at some of the stems, it's actually variegated. So there's a slight mutation. I saw this um, when I was here um, before filming this location. So that's the thing, plant foldies. As you can see, I do visit a lot of the same um, locations just to see if there are re restocks or if they have sales. And so you'll see a lot of these plants and I do recognize them. This one is a beautiful um, uh, Dracaena Fragans, Hawaii. And then this is another Diffenbachia Sparkle. I actually might take this one. This one is um, in pretty good shape. There were some more full ones um, that weren't as leggy. And I actually didn't pan into this, but the bottom part was a little bit leggy um, and there wasn't as many plants as the other ones I've seen. I kind of regret not getting this Diffenbachia because look at how beautiful the variegation is. And it was on sale. It is on sale actually for $14.98. That is not bad at all. And right behind it is an Aglonema White um, Margin, 
We have some huge um, Majesty Palms right over here. That's the thing with Majesty Palms, guys. It definitely needs a lot of bright and direct light. And this one is for $54.98. But for $54.98, you get a huge palm. So that's not bad at all. That's the thing about Lowe's and Home Depot, particularly these two big box stores have some large majesty palms. You can see that as I pan out, you can see some of these beautiful majesty palms. Not really into it just because I don't really have a large um, home that has like tall ceilings. I wish I did. Otherwise, I would definitely get those big um, type plants. Um, and then we have a bunch of hanging baskets right over here. Um, this one is actually one of my favorite Dyphon, I mean, not Dyphon, I keep saying Dyphon Bakia, guys. It's actually a Dracaena. This is a Dracaena White Aspen. The only thing about Dracaena White Aspen is I didn't realize that it actually crisp up um, brown. I don't know if it's because I underwatered it, but it did. And so that's one of those Dracaenas that are a little bit more finicky to grow which is surprising because most Dracaena like this Dracaena hurricane or tornado, whichever one you want to call it, um, are very easy to grow. They can um, actually tolerate lower light conditions. They don't need nearly as much water and they ups, um, upsell. And you can see my shadow as I get there. I am still going to remain faceless for now, but we will see if I will do a face reveal, guys. But you can see the difference. Um, I do love this Dracaena white aspen. Beautiful, beautiful variegation. I actually really like Dracaenas. But surprisingly, I only have one Dracaena, and that one is a tornado from um, Plant Keeper Incorporated, another local plant nursery in Dallas that I got it from. Um, I do want to get the green version as well, as well. I have the variegated one. And right over here, we have a ZZ plant. This ZZ plant is for $15.98 in a self-watering planter. And then we have a ficus lyrata over here in a self-watering planter. Um, I have a ficus lorata that I got at Sprouts, another grocery store here in um, North Dallas, is which is where I'm based at, and I got it for 99 cents. Um, right over here, we have some exotic angels hanging baskets. This one is beautiful. This one is a pearls and jade. As you can see, this pearls and jade pothos, you can see some of the speckling and the variegation as compared to the enjoy. They're calling um, enjoys, or a lot of these big box stores are mislabeling their um, plants as um, pearls and jade, but it's really an enjoy. And I actually really like this plant. I forgot the um, plant ID. We're going to see if I can get the plant ID up for this one. So this one is a Polynesian Ivy. Definitely not a Hydra Helix or a Hedera Helix in English Ivy. Very interesting Polynesian Ivy. And I feel like this is one of those plants that would be easy to propagate. Like if you just take a cutting, stick it in water, it will grow. Let me know in the comments if that is the case. And then we have a beautiful... Um, spider plant but this is a spider plant bonnie it's the the one where it's got curling i actually like it very interesting plant i think it's even more interesting when it starts to shoot off babies i love that about the spider plant might consider getting it but i'm not 100 percent sure whether spider plants are actually finicky plants or easy to care for plants but as you can see regardless of whether this um Lowe's has gotten a restock. They've gone to, oh, whoa, wait a minute. It looks like they watered these water, um, these um, hanging baskets of plants with water. So that was a lot. And that's the thing about water, um, when they water these plants with the catch trays, I'm just afraid that if that water sits there for a while, that it would root rot the plant. And then that's just not good. And then right over here, we have a bunch of um, Croton Gold Dust. This one is for $5.98 by Costa Farms Exotic Angels. I've actually been... Um, buying more exotic angel um, plants by Costa Farms in these smaller um, sizes just because I feel like I can grow them in larger, more mature plants um, down the line. I think that's the fun part about getting a small plant is by, you know, being able to see them grow. This one is a Sunny Star Croton for $5.98. The thing about it is, the sad part is my um, croton that I have that that I got for 50% off, I think I overwatered it because now the leaves are droopy and I feel like these leaves are going to go ahead and drop. So that's the only thing about crotons is they are big divas as well. They require a lot of light. And then this one right over here is a Fetonia plant, Superbia, for $5.98. Now with Fetonia plants, they do require a little bit higher humidity. Their soil definitely needs to be a little bit more moist. They're more ideal for terrariums, but nonetheless, look at how beautiful the veins are. And guys, my plant foliage today, I actually am not going to edit this to where... 
I will have the plant IDs um, shooting up on the screen. Um, I just have run out of time today. I actually had to work. It's Super Bowl, and I'm just trying to make sure that I stay consistent and have a plant party after the Super Bowl for everybody to join. Hopefully, you guys will join, but you can see right over here, we have some beautiful um, Calathea uh, medallion, and then we have some more um, bird's nest fern. I am actually a fan of the bird's nest fern because I've seen a lot of mature um, specimens. They actually grow very large. And then right over here, we have some beautiful purple waffle plants. These ones are a little bit larger. This one is for $7.98. And then these are um, Costa Farms wick and grow plants. So basically at the bottom of the um, plant, there is a little bit of a wick. You can stick these plants in self-watering planters where there is a reservoir and you put water in there and it just pretty much self-waters itself. Um, really like that. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that these um, wick and grow plants um, are actually good just because if you're an overwater or underwater, um, it kind of mitigates that. And then right over here, we have a beautiful syngonium. I think this is a syngonium berry illusion. Yep, berry illusion. So guys, for the plant IDs, at least for today, I'm not gonna go ahead and edit those. Um, thank you for the plant foldies that um, were on the chat last night stating that I should just go ahead and show the plant IDs um, versus editing them. Although I do like editing them because I feel like like for instance, this Diefenbacher here, 1298. I feel like the plant IDs, it is beneficial for people to be able to screenshot the videos, or at least that's the feedback I've been given. Um, and then this right over here is another beautiful Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta. Look at how beautiful it is. It's definitely um, a compact um, one. And this one is for 1298. You see the, the, the wick underneath and it's just sitting um, underneath the, the pot and then it touches the water and it just um, soaks up the water into the potting um, mix. So really good self-watering planters um some people say that it actually can cause root rot but it hasn't given me any issues and then right over here i do love these combo type um fetonias. we've got a white fetonia and a red fetonia and then these fetonias actually have a little bit larger leaf ones i have a pink wave hanging basket fetonia where it's very much larger form in its leaves and then right over here we have another hedra helix guys actually this hedera helix i'm going to say it correctly is a royal um um ivy this one is really cool too um it's got a different form in, t in terms of the leaf and you know my um ivy is actually growing very well in my care it's been a couple of weeks now no spider mites and it is growing some new um, leaves. This one right over here is a mini white Fetonia. Very really nice one. I'm actually really tempted to start buying some Fetonia. I would like to do a DIY um, lamp terrarium. I don't know if I wanna film that or just go ahead and make it and then maybe take a picture and post it on my Instagram. I haven't really been putting a lot of Instagram photos. I'm hoping to do that as well because I do wanna grow the following at Growfold's Instagram. So if you haven't already, please um, follow me on Instagram at Growfold. That is the fastest way to send me a um, direct message. I do respond to almost all messages that I'm given, unless it's some spam or some weird stuff that goes on. You know how the internet can be. And that's why I've kind of stayed a little bit anonymous um, and just stayed faceless for a while. But that one last plant I did show you was a Croton Petra for anybody that was wanting to know what that um, plant was. And then right over here we have, um, this is actually considered a nice plant find. This one is an Epipremnum Arium Manjula Pothos. This is probably one of my favorite pothos because not only does it have some unique high variegation, I love the leaf shape because the leaf shape of this pothos is actually more round. And if you grow this up a totem pole, a moss pole, or let, you know, just some type of pole, the leaves absolutely upsize up and they get very large. They um they can even fenestrate like a Monstera Albo. So that's like the cheaper poor man's um, version of a Monstera Albo. It just takes a minute for them to grow. The trick is with Epipremnum arium or Pothos is they're considered epiphytes. And epiphytes want to crawl up um, a tree, crawl up something and attach itself. And when it starts to attach its aerial roots is that is when it starts to size up in its um, leaf size because it is able to take in more nutrients. So um, just a little bit tidbit about that. If you wanna really see the full potential of some of your aeroids, definitely have them grow up a pole. And then this one right over here is a pink angel fetonia. I literally see a pink angel fetonia every single day. Um, just because again, I am out on those streets, guys. I am out on those streets you know, trying to get you guys some plant content. Honestly, a lot of these plants you've probably seen me talk about, but you know what? I just like showing you guys plants. Like if I 
Um, you know, there's a couple of YouTubers I just binge watch because I just want to see some greenery. Um, I kind of live vicariously through them. And you know what? I want to take you guys along with this journey. I like for you guys to just think that I am right next to you and I am telling you about these plants. This one, for instance, is a variegated lipstick plant by Costa Farms, $16.98. This one isn't as highly variegated, but it says it can re um, it requires medium light. What that means, it is bright in direct light. It can tolerate lower light conditions, but it's a variegated plant. So the more um, variegation you want, the more light you need to give it. This one is actually influenced by light. Um, versus just its natural genetics. So if it's got good genetics and a lot of light, you know, it, you're you're winning. This one is a pe um, Peperomia um, ser Serpens. Yeah, this is a Peperomia Serpens. And what I like about it is the leaves have beautiful heart shapes around it. And then we have another Croton Gold Dust. This one right here, I actually find interesting. So this is a Syngonium for $5.98. This one is a Pink Illusion Syngonium. You can see it's got a different look to it. There's actually like red veining um, on this leaf. I love Syngoniums. They used to be my number one favorite plant, but right now my favorite plant are Aglonemas. Now, I just wish Aglonemas would grow a little bit larger um, and in size and actually just grow more vigorously like a Syngonium. So it kind of is a toss up. I Sometimes I'm like, well, I really like Syngonium more than Aglonema, but then Aglonema have more um, varieties and colors. So this one right here is a teddy bear vine. This one is also for $16.98 by Costa Farms. I love it. I thought it was a trade Scanthia, but it is not. But it's kind of similar into, the, you know, the way it grows. Um, it's one of those I feel like can get leggy, so you're going to have to just prune it back. And then right over here, I wanted to show you guys this. So this is another Syngonium. So all Syngoniums are somewhat similar in the, the way they look. This one is a Syngonium Cream Illusion, and it definitely has a lighter, um, you know, foliage on it love it so much just because there is a faint pink veining on it um i definitely would buy more syngonium but again i have added so many plants to my plant collection since i've been plant blogging in big box um store plant shopping and i've just got to slow down this one over here is a babe um, black rabbit's foot fern really like this and what makes this exotic angels really interesting is the um you know obviously the leaves but there's these like almost tarantula looking legs um you know for the roots so i think those are really cool some people think it's kind of um scary i i think they're kind of cute and then this one right over here is a croton batik um it's definitely got a lot of like splotches it looks like somebody just took some orange and yellow and red paint and splattered it all over the leaves i you know i i do like um crotons it's one of those people um you know those types of plants where it's either you love them or you hate them crotons do best though outdoors in full sun or a lot of sun so that's probably why they're a little bit more difficult but look at this right over here this is another fetonia that's a little bit larger size um this one is for 7.98 so you know the thing about fetonias is look at how beautiful it is in terms of just the the veining and then this one is actually a nice um Another nice croton right here. This one is a sunny star croton. I love how the narrow, the leaves are narrow and then that's just how it's got more yellow. Now, the more light you give it, the more yellow the variegation is gonna be on this croton. Um, what I notice is if you even water it too much, crotons get a little bit finicky. They're almost like they need consistency. Like you don't need to overwater them, but you also don't need to just dry them out. Um, right over here is actually a really cool, um, Hedra Helix, guys. Oh, wow. This Hedra Helix is actually um, overwatered. Um, this one is a spear point Hedra Helix, and I really like that as well just because it's got some very sharp, narrow leaves. Um, I do like the texture of that um, ivy. I would just be curious to see if somebody can grow that long term indoors. So, with ivy or English ivy, they actually do better outdoors in like an in outdoor patio that's shaded. Um, I've seen a lot of people grow them um, just because they are honestly spider mite prone. They're spider mite magnets, and they're just kind of scary to put in a home because they invite spider mites. Um, this one is another type of Syngonium, but I wanted to show you how it's a wick and grow. So um, Lowe's has these planters where they have them to be self-watering. So you just stick the plant. There is a reservoir in there and then you just put a little water, let it sit there. 
and basically the top of the soil stays kind of dry which means fungus gnats and other um, you know types of pests can't lay their eggs and actually hatch and then down there you just put water and the wick right over here will actually pick up the water take it into the soil and you're good um, I do like that a lot I might actually try to get some more um, wick and grow planters um, I think that that's you know a good thing for you know anybody who's trying to prevent plants from getting you know fungus gnats and just you know taking the guessing game I do like this um, polia right here. This is a dark mystery polia. What I like about it is obviously that aluminum texture on it, the dark foliage. I want to get this polia alongside with the polia Pan Am. We're going to see what that looks like. I just recently got a polia um, um, aluminum plant variegated. So I was really excited about that. Um, so I like polia plants. They do require a little bit more moist soil, so don't let it dry out completely. Same thing with that Fatonia I just picked up, but we've got some Syngonium right here. And I'm gonna just show you guys some Hanging Basket by Live Trends. So the thing I like about Live Trends is look at how gorgeous this Philodendron Heteraceum Lemon Lime. So excited to actually get one by Costa Farms, Exotic Angels at a Walmart. And look at how beautiful the leaves are. They're nice and yellow, just a really nice looking plant and they can tolerate lower light conditions the, the only thing is if they have lower light conditions you definitely have to make sure you give it um, more bright and direct light to get that yellow and then right over here is a dragon's tongue um, plant really nice um, very just um, delicate foliage but nonetheless if you want that type of texture in your home you can definitely add that but I'm gonna pan out over here so regardless of whether this Lowe's actually got a restock what I like is they were able to re-merchandise their plants some people don't care about that but honestly I think re-merchandising plants inspires people to buy plants like these beautiful orchids right here and look at this beautiful planter um, you know beautiful plant right over here um i i think it's amazing i definitely want to get um, more of these um types of planters it's very simple i love the philanopsis orchid um and then this one is for 27.98 and it's actually got a shiflera moon drop also planted so i've noticed that they're doing combination planters so we're gonna actually see um what they look like um, we have some more Philanopsis orchids right over here. Now with Philanopsis orchids, definitely either grow them in some orchid bark mix. Um, people have asked how long Philanopsis orchid blooms last. I've been told they can last up to two to three months. So once they bloom, as long as you give them the right um, lighting conditions, which actually they say they can tolerate lower light conditions, I would give them bright indirect light. They would be good. And then obviously do not overwater them. Only water them maybe once every two weeks, once every three weeks. Just make sure that the bark or the medium that they're in are um, completely dry. And then right over here, we've got some beautiful African violets. Some of them are actually in bloom, so that's cool. They've gotten a reshop. But really what i found is with african violets i think um big box stores don't have the best types of varieties there's actually better varieties of african violet like variegated ones that you can buy at local nurseries um this one right over here is a skindapsis trubrii moonlight it's got a little bit of browning so i'm not sure if it has some pests but i've seen this epipremnum panatum baltic blue this one's for 19.98 um, by costa farms training tropical it's already starting to trail and what's interesting is it fenestrates and it doesn't even really need to be growing up a moss pole or a pole i'm sure the leaves would get larger if you let it you know trail up a pole but nonetheless this one's beautiful and i've seen this for a while and it looks like it's still doing very well in this big box store so very interesting and then right over here we're gonna go um look at this this is a coconut kokedama so they've got like coconut husk and it's just sitting there in some moss really nice use of it and this is only for 14.98 very cute um bird's nest fern i really like that so we're gonna see what that looks like and then right over here, we have some um, Calathea um, orchids by Better Grow. And then we have some more orchids right over here. Look at how beautiful these are. And I love um, flowering plants. You know, they're more meant for outdoors when you think of flowering plants, but I didn't realize there were a lot of varieties of um, indoor flowering plants that you can grow. This one is for um, $19.98. Um, so, you know all I, I like that a lot and then we have another type of um 
orchid right over here. It is not a Philanopsis orchid. This one's for $18.98, and it's got a very cute little bloom right over there, delicate looking bloom. Um, what I also like about orchids in general is that their roots are just really cool. That's why I want to get a Vanda orchid because Vanda orchids definitely just grow with their roots exposed in the air. But look at how cool this, um, the spots are on this Philanopsis orchid. I'm sure there are hundreds of thousands of different types of orchids. They would be really interesting to see what kind of orchids you can hybridize. Um, I am not an expert by any means, but I, I find that interesting. And right over here, we have some um, some um, staghorn for, for $6.98. That's actually not a bad price. Um, I would definitely want to get one of these eventually and like mount them on a wooden plank to go hang on one of my walls. That's kind of what I want to do eventually. I just got to get my brother-in-law to do one. I actually want him to cut out a monstera type leaf and then I'll go ahead and um, mount it up. And then we have a bunch of air plants right here for $2.98. That's really nice. And then what I find interesting is Live Trends is actually growing juniper in planters this one's for $18.98 if you ask me i would highly recommend not buying this plant to grow indoors because i don't think this would do well indoors it requires a lot of light um junipers are one of those plants that are more for like ground cover and take full um sun and this is really cool too with valentine's around the corner cutie pie look at that um by live trends and it even has a magnet where you can actually grow that you know on uh, you know put it on like a fridge or something like that that there, there's an air plant right there and then I wanted to show you guys this, you know, one of my favorite philodendrons. This is a philodendron micans. What I like about philodendron micans is it's easy to grow. It's a vigorous grower. It's got beautiful velvet leaves. The, the leaves are just just beautiful and you can um, propagate them very easily. And then we have right over here an Epipremnum arium golden pothos, beautiful looking pothos. I would say most people start their plant journey by getting a pothos. If you haven't started your journey with growing indoor plants and you're new to the channel and you want a, a starter plant, get a pothos. Um, even a neon pothos like this will do very, very well. I like that a lot. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things that we're gonna have to just get more um, in tune with pothos. I think, um, you know, pothos are such an underrated plant as well. And then this is a beautiful philodendron heteraceum, or some people call it a philodendron cordatum. Um, let me know in the comments which is the correct term, but it's just a green form. And then I'm just gonna pan out here and show you this. This is a um, stromanthi triostar. It's got a little bit of leaf damage. Mine is actually doing fabulous. I bought mine actually at Target of all places. Um, this one is also by Live Trends and i just really like the leaves you can actually look at the undersides and it has a you know maroon type um foliage underneath so you can um, view it from the top or the bottom of the you know the plant has just different um ways to view it and then we have some bromeliads right over here bromeliads you will always see these at stores and then i'm going to go pan in and zoom into these beautiful philanopsis orchids really likes philanopsis orchids um I think their care is easy and you can get them to rebloom. Um, Lowe's has the best selection of orchids. Like look at this one right here. It has a different type of um, shape to it. Um, Philanopsis orchids are called moth orchids. I think they're really cool. I guess they have that moth type shape and they come in so many different colors and varieties. Um, I do like this one right here. And this one is, I think for 1998. Um, so they've got a lot of like blooming plants right now because Valentine's is this week and then right over here we have a bunch of white um philodosis orchids i like this orchid as well um look at that beautiful purple right over there and then they've got like a very faint white margin or white outlining on this philanopsis orchid so for my plant foldies if you're new to this channel i call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies because this channel originally was an origami asmr channel so the grow is the plant part the fold is for the origami and paper folding so we call you guys plant foldies that is our community on here and i do appreciate everybody who stays on the live premiere chats and then right over here we have a beautiful syngonia maria for 13.98 look at how beautiful that is it's a darker foliage type plant really like that as well and it has a natural leaf 
shine to it. It'd be really interesting to spray this with some um, neem oil um, We the Wild Protect. It, I bet you it will just be even better with more shine to it. And right over here for $13.98 is another urban jungle plant. This one is a some type of Sansevieria bird's nest, just more of just the green form, really nice looking one. And I know that um, some of you guys have asked me to add some more, um, you know, urban jungle plants because I've been, you know, covering Costa Farms. I do like urban jungle um, just because they do have healthy looking plants. Like, look at how beautiful this Ficus Elastica Ruby is. I just think that a Ficus Elastica Ruby wouldn't really stay in this planter for long because they do get very large very quickly. They're very vigorous growers. At least for me, they have been, especially if you flood them with a lot of light. And this is probably our plant foldy favorite Dracaena. This is a Dracaena Hurricane or Dracaena Tornado for $13.98. Love the terracotta planter. I actually love simple terracotta pots as well. I just think that they're very classy, they're very modern, contemporary, and that's really my aesthetic behind it. But those are beautiful um, Dracaenas for sure. And then right over here, we have some type of croton. Really hope somebody can give me the plant ID for this croton because it has almost like a philodendron betaphylum um, type shape. I don't know if you guys are the only ones that, um, if I'm the only one that notices that, but it's really cool. Love the colors and the variegation. I'm sure if we flood it with a lot of bright indirect light, the colors are just gonna be insane. And then I'm gonna walk over here and show you guys a little bit more of the hanging baskets by Costa Farms. This one, ha let's go pan out the, the plant ID. This is a ca cactus monstrosa, monstrosa. A hanging basket of um, cactus monstrosa right over here. This one is for $16.98. It's a smaller hanging basket. Um, this Lowe's actually just has some more hanging baskets restock. So I find that really um, cool. They don't have a lot of new plants, but the plants that they have are fairly healthy. And then this one right over here is a dog tail cactus. Um, really like that as well. Um, I've seen this particular hanging basket actually the last couple of times I've visited here. Yep, this is the Dogtail Cactus for $16.98. Um, you know, it's a nice looking little hanging basket and it does have some good texture. I just don't have any cactus in my um, personal collection. And then right over here, we have a beautiful Philodendron Moonlight for $22.98. Let me see if I can get it out. Ooh, almost dropped it. Almost had a little accident. Sorry for the Dracaena, but let's go ahead and pull that right over here. Nice looking Philodendron um, Moonlight. I have a philodendron black cardinal and then I have a philodendron snowdrift and they just grow like they have the same type of growth pattern. They're a little bit more compact. They don't necessarily need to trail up a pole. And then like this one right over here, we have a peperomia um, obtusifolia. I really love the peperomia obtusifolia. This one's the variegated form. If you give this one more light, it will definitely get more variegated. Just, you know, a little tip for you guys. This one is actually light influence variegation and we have some hanging baskets. This one right over here, guys, um, um, for $13.98 is a Dracaena White Jewel. Look at the um, the stripes of the leaves. I love how the, the leaves have such white margins. Dracaena, again, if you don't have Dracaena in your collection, definitely consider adding some. And then we have a different type of um, bromeliad right over here. I love these types of bromeliads just because it looks like somebody took some spray paint and spray painted it. Really nice looking um bromeliad and i did want to show you the un the undersides of this plant and this one is for 18.98 not a bad price i would say bromeliads are probably best um you know t viewed from the very top so maybe having the bromeliad at um you know the bottom just putting them on the floor or putting them somewhere lower where you can actually enjoy their blooms and even their foliage that one's actually really cool i love the um the bloom of that this one's really cool to look at that doesn't it look like somebody spray painted these bromeliads i always say that in all of my videos but i really find them interesting and then right over here for um 13.98 we have some anthuriums by costa farms really like this you know traditional red one um, you guys, um, my plant foldies, Google Shibori um, Anthurium and you will see such a beautiful one. That's the variegated form. They've got variegated blooms and that's one that I am trying to get for my plant collection. And obviously we have a bunch of like lucky bamboo right over here. These are super cute. 
These are for $7.98. And it's interesting because they have some top dressing of like rocks that are glued. So don't know why they do that, but they, they have that as top dressing. And this one actually is on clearance. This is $15.98, so it's gonna be half off. And this is a hanging basket of Syngonia Maria. Um, it's not bad at all. I feel like this can be salvageable, but it's starting to decline in health. So I'm hoping somebody will rescue that Syngonium. You know, any plants that you find at big box stores, they have a tendency to decline in health. So, you know, if you guys are out shopping and you want to save a plant, go to a big box store, find them in the clearance and just make sure if you buy a clearance plant, Assume that it's probably got some pests because when a plant is unhealthy, it is way more susceptible to inviting pests because pests want to just take over the plant. Now, this one is a super healthy Syngonium. Not 100% sure what this Syngonium is, but I really do like this Syngonium right over here. And mind you guys, Syngonium are still my favorite plants or one of my favorite plants and everybody should add one. But we are going to go do a little commercial break. So my plant foldies or my viewers, um, I will try to give you guys just a sample of how to make a, an origami paper crane. So I'm using a six inch origami paper crane and you can see one of my Syngoniums in my collection. Um, you would have to just fold it in half and then you will take um, the, top, the top corner and fold a triangle right over here. And then you'll flip it around and fold another triangle um, like that. I do have slower um, versions of this how to make tutorial. I actually have hundreds of them. So if you guys want to learn how to make a paper crane, definitely check that out. Um, for those that don't know, I actually have been folding paper cranes, origami paper cranes for the last seven years. Um, I've been doing that with the goal of being able to fold one million paper cranes in my lifetime. I would like to take those one million paper cranes and make like a huge art installation. Um, but you know we'll see about that i have tons and tons of origami paper cranes um, and I do that every day. It's a relaxing form for me. And I just definitely want to share that with you guys. Um, you know, paper folding has always been a thing for me in my childhood. It actually creates great concentration, relaxation. You get that Zen feeling. And it's just really nice to be able to turn a sheet of paper into a work of art. Now, if you fold 1000 paper cranes, um, the Japanese call it a senbasuru. And when you make it, you are able to get a wish. But as you can see, I am almost done folding this paper paper crane um so my plant foldies viewers please check out some of my origami videos leave a comment too if you if you like them um, i'm trying to just incorporate some of my origami as well since it's been very much plant-based um, i want to make sure that i show you all of my interests on this channel so there you go there is an origami paper crane um, so we're going to go back to the plant, um, sh you know, the plant tour or the plant shopping I'm doing. So as you can see right over here at Lowe's, they do have a bunch of larger foliage plants right here. We've got a Majesty Palm. We've got another Aglonema right over here. This one is an Aglonema Silver Bay. We've got some type of um, Diefenbachia and all of these plants are labeled for $14.98 not a bad price at all so i would definitely pick one up if you want a large plant and then we have all these like um dracaenas or not dracaenas sorry bromeliads but we have a bromeliad right over here with a peperomia jenny and then also a pothos a marble queen pothos very interesting these are by better grow um they're actually growing in sphagnum moss so i find that interesting and then look at this cute look, looking um, phil, um philanopsis orchid with another um chiflera moondrop or an umbrella plant i do like the color of that um that orchid right over here so anybody who actually has orchids please let me know what you think and this indoor plant food is what i actually use um, i put like a drop or two in some of my hydroponic type plants i actually have a couple of plants growing in leca and that's what i use for plant food and look at this i want to show you guys some more um philanopsis orchids just give you guys a, sh um, a zoom and we have some more ponytail um, palms right here. I didn't realize they were actually considered a succulent and not a palm. And then we have some Dracaena marginata. This one, I like Dracaena marginata, this particular one, just because of the pink stripes and also the cream. This one is a darker Dracaena marginata. And, um, you know, it's a good price for it. 
I believe um, it is one that you can actually grow fairly large and you can see if you trim it, it actually shoots more shoots. So really interesting to see how that grows, that growth pattern. But all of these plants right over here, these trending tropicals are for $14.98. That is not a, pri a bad price at all. I, you know, I thought about getting a xanthosoma because I've been adding a lot of alocasia um, or like a caladium, but we will see. I know caladiums are really meant to be grown outdoors. I had a bunch um, in my um, back patio. And then right over here, we have another um, Dyphon Bacchia Sparkle. This one has a little bit of leaf damage. There's some browning right over here. So again, my lesson learned, if you find a plant that you like and it's on sale, buy it because if you wait longer, you know, especially with the big box store, and not to say anything negative about big box stores, they just don't have the time to invest in all of the plant care. And then right over here, we have what you call the clearance plants aka rescue me rescue me please plant look at how beautiful this um begonia rex is in a hanging basket and i don't know what that plant is right over there on the right but i find it interesting and then we have another dracaena um, white aspen and you can see this white aspen is actually starting to brown on the white parts and then we have some type of creep variegating creeping fig um, this one right over here is another syngonium hanging basket um, it's still looking pretty healthy that that one is salvageable but as you can see it is sad that a lot of these plants do decline in health and they end up going into clearance honestly i like those for attempting to at least clearance these plants out i heard that home depots they just go straight into the trash and so like when you think about the plastic planters the soil that they use the gas that was taken for the um the trucks to unload there's just so much of a carbon footprint at least try to sell these plants you know and you know clearance them out like this one right here is actually one that i would buy um, this one is a Costa Farms um, Croton Sunny Star. They're still fairly um, healthy. And look at this orchid right over here too, for instance, in a hanging basket. That one's not bad. All of the clearance um, plants are 50% off. Now these um, Dark Mystery Polias are a little um, sad. I, I, I think that they're good. Unless somebody buys them and wants to actually put the effort to rehab them, they're almost um, at the brink of death. And then we have a Vanda orchid right there. And then we have some more orchids right here. Now those Vanda orchids are probably only on clearance just because they're not blooming anymore. Um, but you know, you can always get them to rebloom. And then this one right here is some type of barrel cactus. Um, I find that interesting as well. Look at how prickly this is right here. Like how would you re repot that, right? You would need some gloves that are just very thick for sure to be able to repot that or some th uh, some tongs. And then right over here, we have another gold dust um, croton. That's not a bad looking one. It's still pretty healthy. Um, that is half off. So I did want to show you guys some of the rescue plants. I'm going to pan over here again. So not a lot of plants. I mean, this um, Lowe's actually had a bunch of pallets, but it looks like um, a lot of the plants have sold through. So that's exciting. And, you know, I just like going to these big box stores again. Lowe's is actually one of my favorite um, places to shop for plants. But really, if you ask me what my biggest um, favorite place to shop is, it's actually Kroger because they have some really cost effective plants. But look at this right here. Like, should I really get this or not? Or should I just hold off and see if I can better buy a better specimen? But guys, we are going to be going grocery store plant shopping. This one actually is a Kro at Kroger Prosper. Texas. This one is a marketplace, so it's a larger type Kroger. It's not just a typical Kroger. So we're going to walk in. This is my very first time ever walking into this Kroger. So we're going to see what kind of plants they have. I will warn you, they're probably you're probably going to see a lot of like flowering plants, floral plants, because grocery stores consider house plants part of the floral department. And as you can see, with Valentine's around the corner, we are seeing a bunch of Kalia lilies and a lot of Philanopsis orchids right over here. Kroger actually has a great variety of um, Philanopsis orchids. I wish they carried other types of orchids, but you know what? They are, they've got a lot of orchids. You know, another grocery store that you can check for orchids would be um, Trader Joe's. They have probably the most cost effective and diverse types of orchids aside from Lowe's. But you can see they've got a lot of orchids here. I'm not really a fan of all of the ribbons and bows and things like that. I honestly find them a little bit tacky, but if that's your, your cup of tea, you know, no offense, but for me, it's not. And then right Right over here we have some Kalia lilies. I really find Kalia lilies really cute 
and they just you know i love the leaves with the little speckles as well um so we're gonna walk in over here and see what kind of plants they have you can see there are just tons and tons of flowers like if you are um, looking for a, a valentine like i always tell people if you're gonna give me a valentine can you just get me a live flowering plant like maybe an indoor azalea a kalanchoe a miniature rose that's potted up and you can see look at that they just have so many flowers so my plant foldies i hope you guys are enjoying the different varieties of plants i've been trying to show y'all more succulents more flowers like look at this this is a purple hyacinth look at how gorgeous it is and if you could just smell the fragrance it's so um amazing the smell it smells so great and you know if you think of like hyacinth if you play animal crossing new horizons on your nintendo switch you know what i'm talking about hyacinth is one of those plant you know flowering plants that i grew on my island and then right over here we have a cyclamen as well this cyclamen is for 9.99 um interesting looking cyclamen because it's got some variegation on the blooms it's not just a typical one but the the, the highest sense I've, I've never seen a hyacinth in real life until this year, or I haven't really paid attention to it. Honestly, I've never really paid attention to, um, you know, plants at a grocery store, and it looks like grocery stores just carry a bunch of this stuff. Like right over here is Acosta Farms um, plant. It's a bromeliad for $14.99, but look at how large the leaves are on this bromeliad. Really nice looking one. Um, it's mostly foliage and they just have a little bit of a bloom, but I am going to pan over here because I thought all of these beautiful flowers, look at that beautiful flowers so if you haven't gotten your um valentine's um bouquet yet make sure to go to like a grocery store they've got a lot selection and in this particular one it looks like prosper just has some amazing um places to shop at it is a you know a developing urban area in north dallas i really do like it it is more of an affluent area so i just like being able to shop at this store and this is only for $8.99. Look at that. That's beautiful. Um, they've got a lot of mums. And speaking of mums, or what you call chrysanthemum, these are the um, New Year's um, good luck yellow mums or chrysanthemum. Look at how beautiful they are. And these are also for $9.99. So nice looking ones. You know, with um, chrysanthemum, they're considered uh, perennials. So you can actually plant chrysanthemum in the ground in your yard once they've stopped blooming. And then they can actually rebloom again. And then, you know, they'll die off all the way down to their bare root. And then they will come back in the spring. So really find that interesting. Um, and then look at all of these beautiful roses. Roses are actually one of my favorite um, flowers. And I found this interesting. Look at this. This is a propagation station of like cuttings of roses so i really like that i like how it's being displayed really cool right over here look at how beautiful the pink roses are and obviously what i like about these roses now is they've hybridized it to where roses are less prickly and don't really have thorns so a lot of the roses you buy in grocery stores or big box stores they don't really have thorns i really like that a lot and we're gonna walk over here we've got some more bromeliads love this bromeliad it looks like again somebody spray painted it I'm not really sure about the bromeliad care tips so my plant foldies or anybody that's watching the the video please leave a comment if um, and let me know about what the care tips are for these bromeliads this one is for 6.99 that is not bad at all for this size bromeliad and look at that that's an interesting looking one right over here i um love this so much and then again i wanted to sh uh, send a shout out to all my canadian plant foldies thank you guys for always tuning in the live chats alfred um i appreciate that kathy you know who you are thank you for um tuning into the live premieres continue to share us um your updates for your hoya compacta um rescues i'm curious to see what that will look like i know you said they had some mealy bugs but keep spraying them they will eventually go away and then right over here guys um i wanted to pan out is this beautiful indoor azalea um this one is for almost uh, this is for 29.99 can somebody give me some indoor azalea like i do want to go to like nicholson hardy which is another local plant nursery in dallas they have the best looking indoor azalea because they have the um the tree forms the braided tree forms but look at this i actually want to grow some i think it will fit my aesthetic my japanese then aesthetic that i have in my house i have a bunch of origami flowers that i made but look at this this is beautiful I saw some that were actually variegated before, but you can see we're going to take a look at the care tips. OK, this is by Cascade Flora and basically the care tips are um, right over here. Keep in bright light, um, but avoid direct sun 
for best flower color and longest bloom keep um, azaleas in cool temperature so these ones do not tolerate um heat so you know they actually would do well in a home um, i know that the native um indoor azalea or these types of azalea grow high up in um, the mountains in asia so like you know that's just really interesting that we can actually grow those indoors like this one right here look at how beautiful this i'm almost about to knock out that one but look at this this beautiful purple one right here very nice I've been told that these indoor azaleas actually rebloom multiple times a year. So that's really cool because there are some azaleas, they only bloom once. Like I have some Satsuki azalea that will only um, bloom in the spring. I was actually lucky to be able to get them to develop. Um, I bought them at Metro Maples, which is a Japanese plant nursery in um, Fort Worth, Texas. Shout out to Scott Hubble. He has some amazing um, Satsuki azalea. But anyways, I'm going on a tangent. But as you can see, we do have a bunch of these indoor azaleas and it's just really Really nice to go to a grocery store I would say if you're looking for flowering plants go to a grocery store you don't need to go to a big box store you can buy a bunch of these beautiful plants like this is another variety of kalanchoe and remember guys it's blooming and this kalanchoe is for $19.99 um, these kalanchoe are actually succulents so these are just in bloom succulents in bloom so really cool looking um, the, uh, succulent and then we have some more Phalaenopsis orchid right over here. That's beautiful. And then we have even more pink azaleas. Like I want to just buy a bunch of azaleas and actually grow them under a grow light somewhere in the corner of my home. Um, I just like plants, guys. I don't know about you. I don't know if you guys just watch my videos to hear me talk about plants or show you guys how much I love plants or even just to stare at plants. Like I honestly am starting to just make videos. This is like part of my daily routine just because I want to just stare at plants, talk about plants, um, share my my love for plants. So my plant foldies again, thank you for always tuning in. I hope someday that we will really be able to grow a huge plant community. I hope our community remains positive, kind to each other and really encouraging because that's what it's all about. Um, and this one right over here is for $14.99. That's a beautiful miniature um, rose. I actually like the color of these miniature roses. So I might need to do my research. I want, I'm, I'm actually curious to see if anybody watching has actually grown miniature roses long term. The only thing I'm afraid of with miniature roses is that they'll get aphids indoor. I'm not 100% sure, but you can see these are those philodendron marble um, princess um these ones have been at all of the kroger locations i've seen so they are sourced out by that one particular nursery i think it's tropic treasures um they also are the same nursery that have provided that rare aglonema called aglonema um red king or yeah red king i was hoping to find one i did see um, a post on reddit where they found some for seven dollars clearance right over here we have another beautiful philanopsis orchid that one is more of like a yellow green color so that's really interesting and that's the thing about kroger they have beautiful flowering plants like look at how beautiful these miniature roses are i might actually bite the bullet and buy some miniature roses although i'm curious to see if all of these miniature roses will end up going clearance um after valentine's but you can see there is a little bit yellowing on this plant right here. So I don't know if it's a pest or what that looks like. I know roses are a little bit difficult to grow. And then this one right over here is a weeping um, pea willow. Um, it looks like it's starting to bloom. I really like that. Right now it's pretty dormant, but we're, you know, we'll see. But this one right over here, I do like that a lot. I've seen that at about three different Kroger locations. Um, this Kroger location has one of the best... Um, varieties of you know orchids i would say the one off of uh custer road in frisco probably has the best met Mats um matsui cascading orchids i don't see a lot here but nonetheless look at all of these flowers um flowers are just you know flowers i do believe bring a lot of people joy i know that if i'm having a rough day sometimes i'll just buy me some flowers and stare at it i know i'm one of those weird people but i really do like buying myself flowers if somebody's not going to give me one um plant foldies you can see we've got bouquets of flowers lots of phalaenopsis orchids um i think i will eventually get some orchids but like i said again i want to get a vanda orchid just haven't found one since i'm from the philippines there's a particular vanda orchid i want to get it's called a waling waling so you'll spell it w-a-l-i-n-g w-a-l-i-n-g google it and you will see why you want to get that vanda orchid 
And then right over here, we have a Croton Mame. I believe this is for $6.99 by Costa Farm. So that's not a bad, look at the, the planter. I don't mind the planter actually. I wish it, w it didn't have that texture, but I do like the color. And this is actually a very healthy looking um, Costa Farms a croton mame um so that's what i love about um kroger i will say kroger has the most inexpensive costa farms plants um they've got some trending tropicals for 16.99 normally it's like 19.84 at walmart lowe's and home depot and these are the most inexpensive hanging baskets and guess what it is not by costa farms it is actually by um urban jungle of all places and urban jungle has been supplying a lot of grocery stores like sprouts kroger um hanging baskets i really do like this syngonium this is for only 12.99 very lush full looking syngonium right over here a hanging basket and i haven't really had a hanging basket of syngonium i ended up buying one actually for 12.99 at kroger at another kroger that one was off of coit road in um, plano texas and then right over here we have some type of creeping fig in a hanging basket by costa farms now these are for 1984 so they're still within the range of what costa farms charges for these type of hanging baskets but nonetheless they look beautiful um i'm just gonna leave that right over here and then we have another one right over here for 12.99 another hanging basket of syngonium this is a syngonium maria you can say that it's a syngonium maria because syngonium maria has like these brown chocolate looking um foliage beautiful plant they even look even better when you've got some leaf shine so a leaf shine i would recommend would be by we the wild protect you can buy that at we the wild usa.com and look at these two hanging baskets like i have the one that i'm lifting up right now but i would totally buy the hanging basket of syngonium for 12.99 very very good price and that goes back to the point of if you go to grocery stores looking for plants definitely buy them there like look at this beautiful philodendron um black cardinal i just hate all of the um extra unnecessary like um decorating i don't think they make great um gifts just looking very tacky to me that's just my opinion if you're into that i i really don't mean any offense but we have some more um costa farms hanging basket right over here um, it looks like we have a dracaena right over here and then we have some um, pothos golden pothos right over here now all of these plants are mostly sourced from um, mason farms which is a plant um you know nursery that is actually based in new mexico so i found that really cool and then like right right over here is a peperomia piccolo this one is for 9.99 look at how beautiful the texture of the leaves are and then that's an aluminum plant but here you go we have a trending tropicals right over here for 16.99 this is an alocasia um silver dragon beautiful looking alocasia love the texture of the leaves i i think this is the year of the alocasia silver dragon you are literally finding them everywhere i do prefer the self-watering planters by costa farms you have only really seen them at walmart although i did see them at a lowe's not too long ago some zz ravens were in a self-watering planter um we just have a bunch of plants here it looks like they're they've got a lot of mason farm plants now this guy's right here do you see this this is an enjoy pothos or epipremnum arium enjoy notice that the um the leaves have very distinct contrast so we've got white variegation alongside the um the green variegation this one is for 10.99 and then right over here we have a beautiful aglonema 12.99 this is an etta rose aglonema beautiful one of all the plant finds i've seen so far this aglonema is one of the best ones just because of the price aglonema tend to be a little bit more pricey and then right over here we have some philodendron micans these are for 12.99 not a bad size for a philodendron micans and these are actually sourced out again by mason farms so mason farms thank you so much for providing us some really inexpensive plants at kroger so if you have kroger guys definitely check out kroger's in your location there's a ton of them in the dallas fort worth area especially in the north dallas area this one right here is a beautiful china doll um, plant for 12.99 you know i always thought that china doll plants are um, susceptible to spider mites but i was told they are not they do require a lot of bright indirect light dough so something to look at and then this one is a nice looking costa farms planter again i do like that navy blue planter so that's the thing about costa farms keep producing nice modern looking planters and you will get more people buying them or at least me just because that's really my aesthetic this one right over here is a peperomia raisinette doesn't it look like raisins 
I've seen this plant so many times and I can never get over it. It's just beautiful. Um, and we have some Hedra Helix and some Golden Pothos. And right over here, we have a bunch of other plants. And, you know, it's just interesting. They have a bunch of balloons and things like that. So I guess they're meant for gifts. You know, plants are definitely meant to be given to others. This one is for $9.99 six inch planter full of pothos really cool i actually saw some kroger where they were reduced to three dollars and they were still fairly healthy so um they do reduce their plants so if i get lucky and find one i will definitely buy those um, reduced plants for three bucks maybe even give them as gifts um i'm thinking about doing a plant giveaway to plant foldies to my subscribers and viewers so we'll see i have an um a monstera albo that i propagated and a monstera thai constellation i might actually ship out unfortunately to my canadian fans or even my um international viewers i won't be able to ship to you but if you are in the united states um look out for a live um you know a um, plant giveaway so we'll see uh, details will come later there's just so many ideas i want to do for the channel but again guys if you haven't already please smash the like button as a according to luke my number one cheerleader for plant foldies smash the like button for this video if you guys really want to support me that is just the easiest way that just pushes um youtube algorithm to keep pushing it to more people who like plants so you know sometimes they'll say like there's 75 um, people in the chat but there's only like 23 likes please 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 take the time to just hit that smash or um, smash that like button i would really appreciate it so you let let me end that you know shameless plug but i mean really though i would love um that uh, engagement it really does help me out and i'll be able to just keep giving you guys daily videos i'm attempting to actually do two videos a week i'm taking some time off to where i'll be able to film a bunch of footage edit it and, you know, I feel bad today that I wasn't able to get you guys the plant IDs, but, you know, I will see you on the next one. Bye.